Okay, thank you so much. And I know each of you are coming from different backgrounds, some from IT industry, some not from IT industry. Some of you are already in QA, some of you are from, uh, have probably another tool experience. But the way I go is making sure that we learn the basics. We start from basics and then slowly apply on everything else. Okay. I will mute everyone so that I can very quickly again show you another Windows application. Okay, so what I did, again under automation, I clicked on record and run settings. This time I'll say Windows application. So I'll ask QTP to perform a test on Windows application. Let's see how this runs. I say OK. Now, I say record. But make sure you do one thing. You go back to your web and don't click on this. Click on this. Otherwise, it will open another browser. It is OK, but you don't need it. Now it says record uh, and it will be waiting for my next operations. Whatever I'm doing on Windows, look, it's generating some code. This is garbage code. I will not need it. I can delete it later. But what I want to do is, let's say I want to open a calculator. When I open a calculator, it generates code. Now I'll do a simple operation. 6 star 3 equals... 18. Okay, good. Now I close it. What was I trying to do is just do a simple uh, operation on a calculator and see how it performs. Is it doing what it is supposed to do? I am checking the functionality of a Windows application called calculator. Now let me look at what it has generated and see what I will need. I will not need the first two lines. This is not relevant. I also will not need this line. You know, I can delete it or if I don't want to delete, but just make it non-workable code as a pure text and not as a code within the script. I can say comment this line. To say comment this line, I can go here and click comment or say control M. When I do that, it becomes green and there is an apostrophe in front of the sentence. This line will now not get executed. What this statement done does is it will run a system utility. Where is it located? This is the path for the system utility. And there are other variables or arguments I can use uh, to instruct it to do various things. Now, it has recognized that as window. If you remember, when we did our web, it was recognizing that as a browser. Here, it is saying it's a different object. I will also not need the move. What this is doing is, it is moving that window called calculator to a different coordinate. I don't need that, so I'll say Control M, which is comment. And now, it is saying on window calculator, search for a button, Windows button called, which has a term called 6 or name is 6, and perform a method called click on that. And you perform a method called star next. Perform a method called 3 and then equals and then close. <clears throat> to make sure that it doesn't close and just displays and stays there, I will comment this line. Now I'm going to run. When I run, it should execute the same steps again for me. <clears throat> it has opened my calc. Okay, that is very fast because uh, that's how it is. So I can, what can I do? To make it go slow, I can say wait or I can put breakpoints, I can do various other things, but I'm just going to say wait. What is wait 3? Wait 3 means wait for 3 seconds before you go to the next step. Okay, 6. It's clicked 6, now wait it for 3 seconds, now it will click on star, now 3 and now equals. Now it's going to wait for three seconds and finish. Great, now it has done this. What if I want quick test professional to do a different operation? Let's say nine star four. What what should it do now? Let's see. Let's do a run and see what it does. <sighs> see, we got a run error. What it meant is and every time you get an error, 
we have to read that error carefully and then analyze why it has come. That way you will be able to make sure your code works perfectly well when you are trying to do an actual test. This is a preparation so which is okay for us. What it says is the 9 win button object was not found in the object repository. Okay, Check the object repository to confirm that the object exists or to find the correct name for the object. Line 6. On line 6 we got the error. Okay, I'll say stop. Stop my test. Don't do anything further. Now, let me see where I can do my object repository to here or I have a shortcut here or even control R. Once I click on that, let's see what all objects it has got. It's got calculator, grab tab, program manager. If you remember, we are it has done some exercise, but we are not using those. We are using this calculator object. Now, under that, it just has star equals 3 and 6. It doesn't have a button or an object called 9. Hence, it is not recognizing. And the same thing could happen for 4. So, what should I do? Uh, why did it only get these values? The reason being, when I recorded, I only clicked on these sets of buttons. And that is what QTP did. It only learned those buttons. Now, I want QTP to learn everything else that is there on calculator. At least the basic operations that are here. How can I do that? I'm going to say, click on Add Objects to Local. What it will do is, it will add objects to a local object repository. What is local and not, uh, we will look at it later. But let's try and add objects. After I click that, you see my mouse pointer is now animated as a hand. I can click which object do I want. And I'll say calculator. I'll click on that. Okay, object selection, add to repository, window, calculator. That is good. I'll say okay. When I say okay, it'll say what do you want to do on it? What kind of objects do you want to bring? You can select one or more objects, uh, just that, nothing beyond it default all object types, selected object types. I will say OK, all object types and click on OK. Now let's look at how my repository changes out here when I click on OK. When I say OK, see it has got everything else. Whatever is probably there in this, it has got that. It has got all the operators, it has got all the numbers, it's got backspace, other functions, it has also got two, three other things. Well, edit. What could an edit be? It's probably this field here. Whatever you could edit is here. It's also got something called as menu. So I could do operations on the menu bar also. Let's say it says copy, paste or view, standard, scientific. I can instruct QTP to do it once I have the objects. And they're also static, static underscore two. I really don't know what they are, but when we want to use them, we could take that help. Okay, it could be this out here. Probably, I'm not sure, but I will not need it right now. Great, so my object repository is now updated. Let me rerun the script or this test and see what happens. Now, 9 star 4 equals 36 is what we should get. 9, okay, now it's recognized 9. Now it is star was anyway recognized earlier. And 4. Well, 36. Great. So it is performed. Now, each time when you run your test to see what has it passed, has it failed, did it do what you asked it to do, was the functionality performing correctly, you would get something called as results. I have disabled results uh, in my pop-up under settings. That is why otherwise at the end of the test, your results would automatically appear. So now I manually clicked on test results and this is what I got. It said I did one iteration and it has passed. The test name is test. The results are named this. What time did I do it? When did it start? When did it end? So it took about 26 to 40, about 14 seconds. Out here, you can drill down further and see how did each of the operations go. See, it said done, done. It clicked on this, it clicked on this. And you can see here what it has done and exactly what time.